Classic Cars and Coffee, University of Western Australia. I'm Simon McGrath. I'm with Nick, who's the proud owner of this magnificent blue MG RV8. Now, the reason I'm talking to Nick about this particular car is every car has its time where it, it sort of lives in the doldrums for a while and then eventually the demographic changes, the, um, the interest in the car increases and then that car has a dramatic increase in value. This is my pick. This is where I think is going to go up in the next two or three years and will show huge return and growth. But despite all of that, you own these things because you love them, isn't that Absolutely. true, Nick? It's a Nick, nice this hobby. Is, that's, it's a great hobby, as you can see here with that, um, thousands of people here today. Nick, this is what year, 92? 90, 94. 94, and they're made in what, 92 to 95? Yes, late 92. So the, I like these. This is the rebirth of the MGB as we knew it because British Leyland and BMC before that hung on to what was a great design for far too long and they didn't reinvest in it, they didn't upgrade it and it, it got very tired when the rest of the world was getting better and better producing cars and you had things like the introduction of the Japanese sports cars, um, there was a, this whole movement because other people could build British sports cars better than the British could build them. This car, they came out with a Rover V8? Rover V8. And what capacity? 3.9. 3.9. And the gearbox is what? Uh, it's five speed. Five okay, speed. so it's a discovery box? Discovery box, yes. Okay. And, you know, did they have air conditioning? Yes, the Japanese versions did, but not in England. Okay, because a huge amount of these went to Japan, and most of the ones you see in Australia have been brought back into Australia, or brought into Australia from Japan, where most of them went. Now this is blue, this is a rare colour. Indeed, indeed. How many blue ones did they make? 230. 230? Wow, that's not a lot, is no, it? No. Out of a production of, what, 2,000? 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 cars of it. That's about, two. what, 11% of them, which is incredible. Did they make any left-hand drive cars? One or two. Okay, One so. or two, very few, yes. Uh, there's a couple in America, I think, in Canada. Now, did you bring this in from Japan, or did you buy it locally? No, I dealt with a guy in Sydney who was, who was, had these contacts in Japan and yes. brought, brought them in yep. and, and, and complied them. Now, I've been watching the value of these cars on the various web pages for quite a few years now because I really fancy them. And they, they just there's a little bit of growth. Now, what I'm predicting is in the next two or three years, I think we'll see real lumps, of, uh, big jumps in the growth of 20, 30 to 40 percent in their value because they're low production numbers, they're right hand drive, so perfect for Australia. They're handsome. They also have you know, modern facilities like air conditioning and they're, they're built to a better standard than the original MG. What do they like to drive? Fantastic. It's, it's, it's so much torque yes. on it. It just goes, it's really a good, good, great cruiser, yeah. not too good in heavy traffic. What's that about? Is that the clutch or what, no, what makes it difficult? It's, 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 originally they came out without power steering. Okay. This one has got power steer, uh, retrofitted power steering. Most of the ones you see on the road today have retrofitted power steering because so the steering you, is very heavy. Did you have the um, power steering fitted? Yes. And that's that electric, electric one? Electric one. Are you happy with it? Oh, it's fantastic. It makes the car so different. Even my wife will drive the car now. Is that good? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is when you get tired. <laughs> Nick, and what a joy. Have you, I mean, this has been in concours across Australia yes. and events. How did it go? Well, it, it came third in Hobart in 2012. Second in Victoria in 2015 and 2016 and here in Perth at one. <coughs> and, and you're not going to part with it? Not no, even no, if no I... plans. No plans. Damn. No plans. And it's and it's driven the Nullarbor. You've taken this Twice. across the Nullarbor? Twice across. Do you have a car bra for it? No. Okay. No, I've had paint jobs. What's the maximum speed you've seen on the speedo? I've had 180. 180? Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened, okay? What, what stays at Classic Cars and Coffee? <laughs> you know, what happens at Classic Cars and Coffee stays at Classic Cars and Coffee. Yes. Fantastic. Nick, what a joy. Thank you. I'm nice so you happy to have met you, and Appreciate I that. love your car. Thank you, Mike. Just before we go, what's the one thing you love most about this car? Is its reliability, and it's as opposed to MGB, and then yeah. when you, and you've got yeah. the source and power to cruise comfortably through yeah. traffic in the Fantastic. Awesome. Nick, thank you again.